Hey everybody, John to be good here. Good afternoon, greetings from Wichita, Kansas. All right, the local time here is 5:42 p.m. Today, once again, it is Sunday. I believe it's April 26th. Let me double check. Yep, April 26th, Sunday. 2015 the local uh, temperature here right now is somewhere around 53 degrees all right right now I only had three hours and 35 minutes remaining on our uh, drive and our 14 and our also an hour 70 that's it after that we're completely out of hours we can do two things shut down for 24 hours or no not shut down 24 hours oh yeah I don't gain anything tomorrow so that means I can't I completely can't drive on Monday so either sit for 24 hours as I said or the next you know Tuesday 8 a.m. 12.01 a.m. Tuesday or do a 34-hour reset. I will uh, ask my DM tomorrow if he would allow me to do a reset or because remember I am supposed to be in Monroe, Wisconsin on Tuesday at 8 a.m. Now if I do a reset that means I won't make it to my appointment. Alright, from here to the TA and Beto Junction is 132 miles, roughly about 2 hours and 8 minutes of driving we need to do. And, uh, I plan to do another reset over there, just like the last time I did. All right, yesterday I did a uh, I did a video. I think it's video number three one one two Williams, Arizona. Uh, in order for this to make sense, you might want to watch that video first. But yesterday I set a topic about a certain analogy that it may have left someone baffled and not understood what I meant and what I was trying to convey. And it also left me a little bit unsatisfied to what I was trying to say. So if I may reiterate what I was trying to say uh, please just give me your patience I will try to get over the uh, John to be good brain <laughs> uh, handicap all right as I said yesterday I gave the analogy of somebody recently going to the doctor for some stomach pains and he complained to the doctor says doc I had this really bad stomach pains I can't figure out why it is what's causing it and it won't stop it just it keeps hurting after all exa you know careful examinations and tests and all the stuff that doctors do half hour later an hour later sometime later doctor comes back with a prognosis or whatever medical term that they uh, they come up with tells the patient I got some good news I got well I got some bad news and some good news the patient goes well what's the bad news it says, doctor says, well, you have this terminal cancer, 
that it's going to kill you. It's too late to operate. It can't be operated. It's beyond, you know, beyond what we can do. But the doctor kind of gave them a really wonderful sign of hope and smile that the sun could, you know, just shine on his face. And he said, well, the good news is we have a cure. He says, right here inside this vial is a cure. All you got to do is inject it in yourself. It will only work if you inject it by yourself. And it will cure the cancer. And it will save your life. It says, this cancer is nothing that you did, nothing that you're doing. You did not do anything to deserve it. You just inherited it from your parents. It is what it is. It's not something you've done, it's just something that you have. Uh, yesterday I was trying to say that that's, that's what the Bible says about us human beings. That is why we cannot enter heaven and be in the presence of God because God cannot look at iniquity, cannot be around sin because heaven and God is pure holy and inside of us it's not something that we've done inside of us is the presence of evil and death and sin okay it's it's not something that you've done that, or we have done to condemn hell or you know it's not something that we've done that gets us to condemn and gets us condemned to hell it's something that we are something we have something a condition that we inherited but know this this is the part where I kind of left out yesterday from this moment on for those of you who have never tried never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ from this moment on, what you do after this, after hearing the Word of God, is what is the sin that you do now. It's a matter of the. It, it's what you do now is the. Is oh, how do I say this? Kind of lost it there. From this moment, it's what you do after this that will determine your punishment in hell after hearing the Word of God and rejecting it. Okay, that's the point I was trying to make. It is... It is not the, the sin that we did that condemns us, but the sin that we do now is the determinant of the... Uh, the amount of punishment that we have that will we as in people for those who have not have not confessed the name of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior I remember you can't you can't call him just Lord I mean you can't call him the Savior and not call him Lord it can't be your genie he has to be your king. That's very important. Now we all know that uh, in hell there are different there are different level of punishment. There are severe punishment for those who have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ over and over and over and yet rejected it compared to someone who has never heard the gospel 
and guess what you know in our society our laws are written in a way that it says ignorance is no excuse if we humans that are flawed can write something like that how much is it more for the for a god that is pure holy and pure uh, just so yes there is no excuse for ignorance and for those who be for those people that died and that has never heard the gospel well the Bible clearly says that without the hearing of the gospel of Jesus Christ they cannot be saved and, and I know it's hard to believe that it's hard to swallow that but you know what God is God he is holy he is sovereign he is the king it's you know just just take away the emotion take away the pride and says well why would God condemn me I didn't do anything it's not something that we've done it's something that we have I can't imagine somebody out there that says well I haven't done anything wrong really you mean you've never stolen anything you've never looked at the opposite sex or yeah the same sex and and lust after them if I may ask this always has baffled me. Now, atheist believes in right and wrong, right? I mean, somebody atheists are, are moral person. They believe in right and wrong. So if they did something wrong, it's just that's it it was just wrong and forget about it or I can't uh, I can't imagine where, where do they get their righteousness where, where do they get their morality but that's a totally different subject I suppose but anyway as I tried to explain to someone it's not what you do that long already condemned you and judged you it's what you are and what you have in you what you have what we have in us but you know as 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 unfair as that is as if I may use our modern day term oh it's not fair you ever notice that the world is hell-bent and saying well that can't be fair well it's not about being fair I mean, if it's if it was all about fairness, man, we God could have just left us alone and forget about it. As as big as an issue that is, the bigger issue really is that there's a way out. There is an antidote that God provided, and that is the sad sad tutelary death of his son Jesus Christ he lived a perfect man he had to live a perfect man he had to conquer death he had to conquer sin so that his perfectness and his righteousness can be imputed in our hearts 
That way we can die ourselves and start living His life. Our spiritual life must die and we must replace it and live His righteousness. Because the Bible says our righteousness alone is as filthy as rags. I really believe that the peop the reason why people reject the gospel of Jesus Christ is it's got to be pride. It's got to be pride that they don't want to be ruled over. They don't want to be Lord over. Either that or the total love of their sin. And, and you know, I've said this a million times. I think I gotta say it over and over again. If you guys only knew what I have done in my life, I would grant you the right to stone me to death. I've done some horrible, horrible things. Until to this day, sometimes those things cross up and pop up in my mind. And I'm thinking, if only a bullet in my head would help, I'd do it. But I know for a fact that a bullet in my head won't solve anything. In fact, it will make things more worse. I'm not just saying this, okay? I, I deserve whatever punishment God could have given me. By the grace of God, by His love and kindness and His mercy, He gave me His Son so I may be forgiven. There's just no other way to say it, no other way to do it. So don't, don't, don't think of me as this goody goody too good shoe or whatever how you spell that or pronounce it. I, I am not trying to convey myself as a as this perfect righteous man. Oh God forbid I am completely the opposite. But by the grace of God and by His grace alone. You know what's mind-boggling, my friend? As wicked and as sinful and as evil as I am, as I was. I'm actually considered a saint. I'm actually called a saint by God not because of anything I've done but because what I have in me the Spirit of God in me that qualifies me or that makes me belong to his righteousness and imputes that sin in me You know, in my own salvation, in my salvation that God, I, that I have inherited from Jesus Christ, that I've acquired, or I have done, not done one tiny little thing to add to it. I didn't do anything. 
I didn't pay for anything, I didn't work for anything. In fact, even the spirit for me to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that spirit alone was a gift He has given me. All I did was, all, all I did was I believed and I signed a dotted line. That's all I did. There, there's, I didn't do anything, I didn't say anything, I just, I just believed in his son, his only begotten son. That's and for those of you, for those people out there that believe otherwise that they've been saved because they go to church or they belong to this group or they've done this so they deserve to go to heaven. Oh man, you guys are you guys missed it. Salvation is a pure, pure, free gift. Lest anyone can boast. And again, I am not a preacher, I am not a Bible theologian. I guess most of you out there would know me by now. I am completely, completely the opposite of things that most people think. And you know what's the one thing that I'm really glad? I glad I'm glad you guys don't know me as well as God do. All of you will be stoning me to death. May the peace of the Prince of Peace be in your heart. That only Jesus Christ can provide. Today is the day of salvation, my friends. It is what you do after it is, after you have heard the gospel, determines not my gospel, okay? I, in me alone, I got nothing good to say. I urge you not to believe me. I urge you to search for yourselves in the Bible or find somebody who is really qualified to tell you this and explain it to you. Anyway, we'll catch you later, John, to be good here. Have a good and godly day, everyone. Peace.